So I, I made a TikTok talking about some of the patches that I had and a lot of people liked it and um, a few people asked, you know, how do you make your patches and so I thought I'd make a video talking about it. This is a kind of tutorial on how I make patches for my jackets. This is more for um, patches that go on things that you don't really put in the wash like a jacket. I believe if you were to add fabric medium to the paint while following this, it could work, but I've never done it, so don't take my word for it. I've been making patches since I was um, 14 or 15, and so I've been doing it for about uh, three or four years now. But I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but this is just how I do it. And also this is for um, painting patches, not embroidery or anything, I don't know how to do that. Um, also, I have my script over here, so if you see me looking over there, that's why. My first step is um, planning out your patches and where they're going to go and all that. I find that it's um, helpful, at least for me, to take the patches you're going to, like, you know, once you've figured out all the patches you're going to make, to draw them on pieces of paper. And as you can see, they're around the same size, so that's, that's the goal, so you can kind of see okay they should be this size or something like that. My second step is selecting your fabric and priming it. So you could really use any fabric or anything to make your patch but I find something a little bit more on the the uh, sturdier side works the best for me. I use this fabric that's um kind of backpacky canvassy material Fabric qualities I think you should avoid, in my opinion, are, um, I find painting on thinner fabrics like cotton or fabrics that are really de delicate to be kind of difficult. They're just, they just feel too delicate. You could make it work and it would look nice on, you know, something like this that's a more delicate thing, but um, here's a patch I did and it just kind of crumbled. Now on the flip side, my controversial opinion is denim also kind of sucks to paint on because it's it's a really thick, strong fabric, but it's a little too thick and strong. I find that it's already thick and then when you, you have to put multiple layers of uh, primer or whatever on it because it just soaks up so much paint. So by the time you have all the primer and then all the paint on, it's just like 17 feet wide and you can't really like sew it on and all that. Another one is fabric that frays really easily. You're going to be handling it a lot. Um, you know, you're going to cut it out and you're going to get your grubby hands on it. And you're going to, you know, move it around. You're going to paint on it and then you're going to hold it while you adhese it on. And while it's on you, it's going to move around. So something that frays a lot might not be great. If it frays over time, that's fine. Like, uh, I have this one jacket right here, and it has, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, some of it is frayed a little bit, but I kind of like how it looks. So, you know, it's all personal preference. And my last thing is anything stretchy, because when you take, you know, if you're, you know, sketching it out, the fabric will go with the pencil instead of your pencil going just over on top. Now when it comes to priming, I personally find a layer of gesso to work well with me, but I haven't really experimented too much, so there might be a method that's better. You could also just use a layer of white paint, or if, um, it, uh, like this patch, I didn't prime it at all because it's, it's just me adding white text to black fabric. You don't have to prime it but it helps a lot because fabric soaks in a lot of the paint it just makes it so it doesn't soak in as much welcome to my uh, art space my little studio um it's in my bedroom we're just at a different angle um and as you can guess we're on to the fourth step which is painting it and um it's a pretty basic step you just fill it in with paint. Like I said before, if, if you want, you can add a fabric medium to your paint and it, it's supposed to make it last in the wash, 
but um, it also makes it a little more transparent, so I just skipped that step. Now for the opal patch and this patch, I went with a more realistic design. And now I'm going to ramble a little bit about realistic patches, so, you know, feel free to skip forward. I'm going to see if I can do those, like, section things so it'll be easier to skip forward and all that. Um, one thing that I found that helped me a ton with um, just painting realistic in general is this one filter on PixArt, which is a photo editing app. Um, this is one this is one filter called poster and basically it takes the colors and it cuts it up into sections and so it's much easier to see oh this color is here this color is here with the opal patch and this patch I used I used these paint markers that I recently got and I'm just I'm very mixed about these pens I'm gonna make a video review on them at some point but um I was able to, ex excluding the background, I was able to paint the opal patch in less than an hour, which, you know, it's a small patch, so it may, that might still seem like a lot of time, but normally realistic patches take me like, like five hours or something, so being able to do it in less than an hour was fantastic, because they're all, the colors are very nice and kind of muted, so they're already pre-mixed, and then I'll just, you know, mix them with each other and so I was able to just just you know bust out the paints one last thing is you don't really need to blend with these small patches because um from afar it they'll it'll all blend in together and no one should be super close to you no one should be like a foot away that's weird you know that's, that's their punishment for being weirdly close. They have to see the fact that your patches are unblended. Fifth step, adhesing it on. Now, I believe the easiest or quickest method would be using some form of fabric glue, but personally, I've never used it before because I like to switch up my patches a lot. Um, so I just do um, really simple sewing. Nothing too intense because, like I said, I'll cut them off and put new ones on. But um, when I was in my patch heyday, my patch craze, I, I took my jacket and I put Velcro on it. And then I put Velcro on the patches. So then, you know, I could put the patches on wherever, I could easily switch them up. Or like if I wanted to do a themed day, I could. So basically, you know, I just, so basically I just, you know, do it like that. And so I could have like a Halloween theme or a cutesy theme or whatever. But um, one important thing to note when doing that is you should really make sure that the patches that mean a lot to you are stuck on using some form of maybe a quick sewing bit on or something or um, a safety pin that's what I did for a lot of them because um, this guy which uh, one of my friends designed I had him on my jacket and then one day he was gone and um, like three weeks later I found him like stomped into the ground so Make sure they're the ones that mean a lot are adhesed on. So that's pretty much it. If you've made it this far, thank you. I'm hopefully gonna do more YouTube videos in the future. I've been trying to do YouTube videos for years now, but I just have a lot of issues and insecurities about my voice. So hopefully, you know, I'll be able to get over that and start to do more in-depth videos on stuff like um i know a lot of people are curious about my canvases and stuff so hopefully in the future i'll be able to make actual youtube tutorials on stuff so like in the subscribe 